Times first change into your station, the Africa Independent Television, and welcome to your program, Sekutu Watch Africa, only on this channel. We'll bring you that information you need to keep your life safe and secured. Welcome to your program today. My name still remains Patrick Abambu. Today we'll be bringing you a collection of very interesting reports. Um, for course of time, we just go straight to the first reports uh, to tell you that uh, we're still bringing you things that happened during the 2024 Nigeria media celebration that was held in Plateau State. There was a significant uh, activity that took place that um, the today still lingers in the memories of so many officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, and indeed the whole Nigerians and those who were there talking about the the presentation of housing to some uh, disabled uh, uh, soldiers, wounded soldiers, soldiers who had fought for Nigeria, but uh, uh, to some of them they said they felt that Nigeria and Nigerian army had forgotten them, but the chief of army staff remembered them and gave them free house, fully equipped houses. Sit back as we bring you this report by Julie Daniels. In demonstration of the recognizing of the sacrifices paid by soldiers who were injured in the line of duty, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tao Reed Lagbaja presented keys of houses to wounded soldiers as part of the 2024 Nandran Army Day celebration, NATSEL, which took place in Maswe Kobe Cantonment, Plateau State. To find out how the recipients feel about the gesture, Security Watch Africa spoke with some of them. First time in history that I received this kind of offer. I know we, we encounter many officers, many chief of army staffs, but this one, in fact, is overwhelming. We couldn't know how to explain our, our gratitude for what he did for us. We are very happy for what he did for us because most of us that we are, we are, we are disabled, they believe we can do nothing again. Many, many will not even attend to you. They will just forget about you. But he remembered us and he gave us us. We have to thank him. May God bless him. Yes, I really appreciate because one, with this my condition, I still remember us, give us house. Abby? So, so I was thinking that maybe they've even uh, abandoned us. So I really appreciate the house they give to us. I'm happy, I'm glad that I have this house, that I mean, did not forget me. So may Almighty God continue blessing our able Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Lakpaja, and we continue to pray for him, and we pray that we should be getting leaders like him. A good leader thinks and ensures the well-being of his team members, which helps to improve the outputs of such organization. This presentation serves as a motivating tonic for officers and soldiers of the Nandran Army to always put in their best in all assigned responsibilities. Shirley Daniels, Security Watch Africa. Um, I must say kudos to the Chief of Army staff for that gesture. When the idea to do this report came, I felt that, yes, uh, Nigerians need to know how, what leadership is all about. Yes, this brings us to the next report, talking about leadership with passion and compassion of the people. Um, Nigerians uh, are crying uh, the, because of uh, food prices in Nigeria. Last week, we did a program that uh, looked at um, how is it happening and what should be done. Uh, today, uh, Secretary of Africa, Lucy Taiwo, went to the market 
to find out what the sellers and the buyers are saying and how best can the food prices be controlled. Sit back as we bring this report. With reported rise in the cost of essential commodities nationwide and the attendant fear of acute hunger in Nigeria, Security Watch Africa visited one of the popular markets to find out the causes of the rise and how buyers are coping. We spoke with some traders on why prices of items are on the rise. Since those have closing border, this thing started. So after that, they now come remove Sun City. Since where they have removed Sun City, anywhere where we have going and buying market, the thing was increasing from there. It's not our fault. Bag of rice we used to buy, we used to buy um, fifty thousand before. Now it's eighty-five thousand naira. My carton of fish I used to buy forty thousand now before. Now it's hundred thousand naira. So everything now is very very costly. May they help us. Even if they open border, we can see rice, small, small money as they see before. Because this, our Nigerian rice, you go buy them. Boo now, it's almost 2,600. You go buy boo, you go buy granite, you go buy this one. Things is very, very coarse. You go same market, they cannot see anything. Eh? Enter market, you go see people is begging. Before you go give four or five people free food. Your own, your own gain, don't finish. One we go and buy very costly. Coming back to sell, we also sell costly. They say transportation, poor routes. Like for example, this is our Semo now. Semo, before I could get Semo, at times we drive to Suleja to go and look. Once one trailer enter, before you say another, maybe it's in two weeks time because of bad routes. We also tried to find out from some buyers we met on ground on how they are able to get what they need. I came to buy crayfish. Normally that's seven thousand naira, but now they say it's nine thousand. So I'm surprised with my list. I don't think I can be able to buy more things. Even this fish, in short, we thank God for everything. If not because of God, I don't think we'll be survive. But there is God. Honestly speaking, it's not funny. It's not funny. You don't even know what to buy and what to leave. Because everything keeps increasing day by day. You don't even know what to do. So we are just buying what we can buy and then living a day at a time. They gave their views on how the prices could be made affordable to Nigerians. The, the focus should be more on agriculture. Because the way things are going now and then there should be kind of mobilization to sponsor those that are into full-time agriculture. I think... That should be able to do, go a long way in solving the present situation. Our president, Tinubu, to look into it properly. First of all, we want to try, uh, this um, fuel to come down. If fuel come down, other things will equally come down. Because means of transport matters a lot in any things we are doing. Because for you to go there and there is not easy. Because all these things are being transported from other the town to order. Lucy Tau reporting for Security Watch Africa, Abuja. Yeah, welcome back. Yes, um, uh, two, two weeks ago, Security Watch Africa was one of those uh, media team that visited the lecture basin um, to find out what the current situation is in terms of security. Um, security Watch Africa, uh, Shuli Daniels again brings us this report. in line with his leadership style of transparency and accountability on the operations of the multinational joint tax force mnjtf the force commander major general ibrahim salihu ali invited media to visit areas under the mnjtf the team set off from madugri in Barano state the first point of call was in baga on the kukawa local government area where the district head Alahaji Zana Ajinoma received the media team and expressed gratitude for what the MNJTF have done to restore normalcy in the local government. I very much appreciated your effort and contribution toward building hospital, school and the water supply to the community. We are also looking, for, looking forward for other support 
and the community and given your support in order to build the capacity of my district. Finally, the security situation here in Baga, we saw a progress. Even farming and fishing activities are moving smoothly. We thank for the effort of the military and other security agencies, especially our civilian JTF tax force. They are doing their best. May Allah protect them all and reward them abundantly. To confirm the return of gradual peace in the community, the team visited a school where students were receiving lectures in their various classes. The principal of the school and one of the head teacher gave their views on the return of peace to the community. Actually, when we opened the school in 2021, most of the school surrounding was deserted by the Boko Haram. So, but at the or with the inter, uh, intervention of the multinational joint tax force, actually the school it's back to its shapes. The school fences have already renovated even the school gate insisted and every almost most of the classes and the toilet facilities are also uh, uh, renovated nigerians i mean deserve the thick length of appreciations because they have contributed a lot apart from the security situation that has been improved just few years ago we were not able to sleep with our two eyes without barrier. But now, at the interventions of the Nigerians, I mean, if not because they are here, nobody will have been here. And apart from the security situations they are given, they were able to also contribute a lot to the development of education, agriculture, and other human endeavor. Students are coming to school every day without fear. We were able to go to our pumps, do our job there without fear. And we were able to also sleep in the night with two of our eyes closed without thinking of anything wrong. So Nigeria, precisely the present multinational joint task commander, Brigadier. So he has contributed a lot, a lot. The infrastructure. The teaching and learning material to the students, the welfare of teachers, he has taken care of all this. So we are very much appreciate the effort of Nigerian army. The major attraction in this once deserted community was fishing, as the people are known for the fishing craft. With the activities of the terrorists, it became difficult for any meaningful venture to take place. Following the counter-attack and operations of the MNJTF, their fishing activities have continued. The military ni chiamane na masuka makipi na kuka lo kalgame. Azama lafi alhamdulillah ya kuka. Dang da ba haka mukeba. Ena jiko da mukazo kama makipi maba mai. Amaya zo alhamdulillah. Ana fita. Da sojoji irun kokarin da suke yi alhamdulillah. So na kokari mu muka sheda kokarin su saboda duk inda muka ji da mu din za su tafi kuma za su yi magana abu insha Allah kasuwanci to ka san shi duk inda yaki ya shiga irin wannan abubuwa sai a hankali kasuwanci yana tafiya daidai misali sai mu ce ba laifi sai dai muna neman kari ya ci gaba insha Allah a drive round the community shows businesses and life returning to normalcy with commercial activities going on from Baga in Kukwa our local government area of Banu state the team moved to Derak in Cameroon, a once deserted community now with 70,000 people bustling with loss of activities due to the operations of the MNJTF. Okay. 
bula madam wana dehe bayani. Sabu da aiki yai mana yende mikiso ama wenu gulung geski abu mchida iba sabu da son som ache aiki na yai kaba yaban ubaya da ula. We met and spoke with the supervisor of Derak, Mama Zama, who confirmed the peaceful situation in the community. Before now, no one can sleep at night with his or her two eyes closed. But for the conduct of this operation, peace has returned to this place. The security situation has been taken care of. MNJTF is not just fighting with arms. They also deliver humanitarian materials to the people. This action has seen a lot of terrorists surrendering by the day. We are very much at peace here. To round off with the visit, the team visited the Sector 2 of the MNJTF in Bagasola, Chad Republic, where they were received by the Commander General Brigadier Adam Selig, who spoke on the activities of the MNJTF under his command. I want to thank the commander of the multinational joint tax force. They are always involved in the security of this place because security is everyone's business. We are always awake to make sure we end insecurity in this place. Although there are instances where the Boko Haram operatives try to infiltrate the civilian populace to stage attack. The sector two command is always alert to prevent such plans for coming into fruition. And our relationship with the civilian populace is very cordial. We share information when necessary. Sector 2 is not just fighting Boko Haram. We carry out humanitarian work like building schools, hospitals, provide water through sinking of boreholes. Our soldiers are also teachers in some schools. With these actions, we have seen large turnout of students coming to school. In all, we make sure their security is guaranteed. For those communities that are far away from here, we send some of our troops to make sure they are safe. We also make sure our troops accompany them to their farms and markets. The villagers of Ngobwa in Chad were not left out as they sing praises of the MNJTF. We have relative peace in our community. Before now, Boko Haram was a major threat to our lives. Since the presence of MNJTF, we can now sleep with our eyes closed at home without fear of any attacks from terrorists. Our community is fully in support with the operatives towards putting an end to terrorism. When the sun and the sun are security, the sun are doing a lot of them make it fear. Come on, you do the day I must not do a sun at Duba Chingarin. Sun as well gave a game. Come on, you are no mutan and banza and sonana. That's what. In his interview, the high authority of Akasola, Mahamat Wali, spoke on what they were facing before Operation Lake Sanity 2. I think in recent times we do not have security challenges. For about two months, there have been total calmness. Although a few people left because of Boko Haram, but have now returned and settled as the Boko Haram are no longer around. We have benefited a lot as a result of this operation, some of which are safety of our people. The security men we have here, they have built schools and hospitals. We were also given fishing materials. Truly, we do not have problem with them. They collaborate with us, the people, and the administration. We had an orientation with them where we were given guidelines and instructions. They are very friendly with us and we have no problem with them. The MNJTF is indeed working hard to make sure that countries under the Lake Chad Basin return to normalcy. Shirley Daniels, Security Watch Africa. Yeah, welcome back. Yes, I will take you straight back to uh, Meduguri, where the theater commander, Operation Hiding Kai, uh, Major General Wahi Shwebu, uh, hosted a dinner for soldiers. Uh, uh, to celebrate uh, what they have done in the first quarter, in the first half of the year. Sit back as Shirley Daniel brings you this report again. There is no doubt that hard work do pay off. This can be said to be true 
as a theater commander North East Joint Tax Force Operation Hadin Kai, Major General Wahishwai rewarded three soldiers with three bedroom flats each in Abuja as a way of saying thank you for a job well done in the fight against insurgency and to mark the end of the dry season and media operations. The theater commander made this presentation at the dinner health with the soldiers. The media it's an avenue for soldiers from all across the theater, from sector one, sector two, and sector three, to have come together to interact with the theater commander in a one on one basis. For over five hours, from 10 to around 4, we interacted and we discussed issues that bothered. Discipline, welfare, comradeship, warrior ethos, as well as the decisions that we took for our collective benefit in order to achieve our mandate of restoring peace to the Northeast State of Operations. The senior NCOs and NCOs made some very valuable suggestions during that drama, which I assure you that will be implemented to our collective benefit. General Shwai, while presenting the certificates to the awardees, noted that the award is in line with the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tao Reed Lagwaja's command philosophy. This today also affords us the opportunity to present the upper leaders to the three beneficiaries of the affordable housing option for soldiers and poor for short. As a means of encouraging all our soldiers in the theatre to key into this laudable initiative by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Chief in Lagwaja and General Aminella. This evening, we have all witnessed that this program, initiative, the advanced program, is for real. So I encourage each and every one of you as you live here to try and subscribe to that program. <coughs> this evening dinner also gave me the opportunity to call to further interact with the soldiers on the sidelines with some of the officers that are here. <laughs> This is a testament Earlier in the day, the theater commander had hosted a Durban, which is a routine activity in the military with 380 soldiers across formations and units of the theater, where he spoke on issues consigning operations. <laughs> We need to do a lot in all our domestic locations, all the airports, even when there are other places that we need to do a lot. And because our work is what we call on the job training, your senior NCOs, your battle commanders, your battle commanders, company commanders, The soldiers were given opportunity to ask questions. Yes, we are all brothers in arms. You understand? My relationship with you, or your relationship with you, like my brothers. So you don't want to say anything bad about that one person, that one will see you bad about that one person. So that together, you can achieve a particular task. Shirley Daniels, 
Security Watch Africa. Uh, thanks so, so much for watching us uh, this week. Um, I'm sure you have enjoyed the uh, report so far brought uh, covering uh, what is happening in the country, particularly uh, in the northeast uh, axis of the country in terms of security and uh, the current uh, uh, food scarcity Nigeria is experiencing. Um, like uh, the respondent did said in that, in that uh, interview, uh, that the government should encourage agriculture so that um, the, um, look at the issue about the fuel price so that uh, transportation will become much easier to move uh, foods across the federation. If you have enjoyed watching us this week, join us again next week when we'll bring you another exciting edition of this program. Before then, follow us on all our social media platforms, send your views and your comments so that we can um, uh, get feedback for feedbacks for you. Until next week, I say thanks for staying tuned and bye for now.